Y'all, I am worried about Tony Braxton. And also, Monique has doubled down on Bonnet Gate. Couldn't just let it go. Couldn't just mind her grown business. Ahoy hoy, family. It is your girl T, aka Nappy Headed Jojoba. Not Nappy and not Jojoba. Nappy Headed Jojoba or just call me T and save us all some time. There's been a bunch of things happening in the past week to two weeks. And the way my schedule and my general will to make YouTube content is set up right now, I'm not gonna be out here doing a whole ass video just to talk about whether Nick Cannon needs to be neutered or not. So we're trying something today. Some of these topics are definitely not piping hot tea at this point. But if you are hearing me say words right now, then something clearly has tickled your pickle enough to clickle the title of this video. So yeah, it is not hot tea, it is lukewarm tea. If y'all ain't heard already, a few weeks back, Monique had publicly denounced young queens for wearing bonnets out in public. And there was much pushback from Zoomers and millennials alike defending the right of black women to wear bonnets to the airport and wherever else they damn please. But once everyone had finally more or less moved on and forgotten about that, Monique decided to bring this up again, essentially. She was at the airport a couple of days ago and she decided to post a woman who she sneak photographed. Monique posted this picture of this woman to her Instagram because I feel some type of way about Monique photographing and posting this woman on her public Instagram without this woman's consent. Like Monique ain't just post this to her close friends on stories. This was in her feed to her 1 million plus followers. Thereby publicly humiliating this woman whilst Monique pretends that this is coming from a place of love. <laughs> For those reasons, I feel some type of way about reposting the photo in this here video. So I will not be doing that. I will link it below if you really feel like you need to see it for yourself if you haven't already. Because this isn't some private page where I have just a couple friends in my family and I just don't feel right participating in piling on and essentially doing the same thing that Monique did. You can tell from the photo angle that it is more than likely that this woman had no idea she was being photographed. And I'd venture to say that she possibly didn't know that her skirt was up and her drawers were on show. If we can even call what the woman is wearing a skirt because it's giving me long top. Maybe security asked her to run her pants through the x-ray, I don't know. And because of precedent, there has been much talk of bonnets at the airport again. Though, unless my eyes were deceiving me when I was looking at the photo in question, this woman was not wearing a bonnet, that was a plastic shopping bag. To recap, skirt up, draws out, key foods bag on head. Now, I am not exactly on the team of people who want to be out here defending our right to wear a key foods bag on our heads to the airport. Not exactly a top priority for me to be the Pathmark princess of Terminal 2 in the fight for freedom, but okay. Fact is, respectability politics are very real and they are something that we need to call out and dismantle when they actually infringe on our ability to progress as a people. Having said that, self-respect is also very real and I, talking about me, not telling y'all what to do, telling y'all what I do. I would not go to the airport with a plastic shopping bag on my head and my drawers out. And if my drawers were out, I would hope that some kind stranger would tap me on the shoulder and let me know. And had I been Monique, rather than taking this woman's picture without her permission and posting it to the fucking internet, I would probably have quietly told her that her skirt was up. You know, as long as we're weighing our options in this scenario. Or I would have figured old girl was going through it and I would mind my damn business. Maybe sis was just having a day. Maybe sis was just having a month. Frankly, by posting this to her Instagram, Monique is the one making us look bad because she's implying that this is what we're all doing out here. I mean, some are, obviously, but had it not been for Monique, the only people who would have seen this lady would have been the people at the airport. But now Monique with her over 1 million followers have seen it, not to mention the ripple effect of the reposts. And that fuels the idea that 
this is what we're all doing now when it ain't. Can you hear the obnoxiously loud Russian television? Because I get to hear it all day, every day. And I can't close my window because it is summertime in the apocalypse. So it's just gonna be too hot and I will die prematurely. Rather than humiliating strangers on my Instagram instead of either leaving them alone or tapping them on the shoulder, I am mostly interested in changing this dynamic where one of us somehow represents all of us. If Brayden and Skylar show up to the airport with their entire asses hanging out, nobody says, you know, white people really need to do better. Brayden and Skylar represent themselves and only themselves. There is no assumption that they somehow represent what all white people are doing. So why should the key food queen? Fila, part of my Patreon fam and one of my realest ones, period. He brought up a really good point with just how disingenuous Monique actually is with the language she keeps using in these posts like with this one she was talking about beautiful queens and she even said no judgment like ma'am this is exclusively judgment the only thing that this entire post is is judgment which is fine everybody judges just own it but my favorite thing from Fila's comment was how he was also talking about how monique undoubtedly carries a lot of pain from the massage noir fat phobia colorism the list goes on that she has undoubtedly had to experience throughout her life and career. I think that was a really insightful and compassionate observation and point to make because Monique has obviously gone through a lot in her career and in her life and Bonnet Gate is at least partially an outgrowth of that, I think. Perhaps this is a lot of internalized racism and misogynoir being packaged as love and concern for other black women. And I do understand where she's coming from. Again, you ain't gonna catch me at LAX with my bonnet on, but that's my choice and how I move. But I probably will have my bonnet in my carry-on to put on once I'm actually on the plane. You know, once we're in the air and I'm trying to catch some winks. Or, favorite airport hack, I will pin a bonnet inside of a hat and just wear that. And if I do happen to see someone in the security line with her bonnet on, I promise you I don't care. It's none of my business. She doesn't represent me just the same way I don't represent her. It is not complicated. Y'all, I'm closing my window. I'm changing exposure. I'm just trying to get through this. Tony, Tony, Tony. Y'all, this one is less my two cents and more so me panhandling. Y'all, is Tony Braxton Amber Rose now? I saw this video on Baller Alert and I felt like I needed a life alert because I damn near fell out. Now, Tony Braxton started rocking this Amber Rose hair at least a month ago and I thought that it was Amber Rose the first time I saw her then too but then this clip popped up in my feed yesterday and I saw in the caption that it was Tony again and not Amber Rose and I realized it wasn't just the hair and the fact that her face is completely swallowed by those sunglasses that was confusing me where is Tony's complexion. I think it goes without saying that Tony Braxton is in ridiculous shape. The body yaddy yaddy is sickening, it's goals, it's all of the things. But Tony Braxton's melanin must be on a milk carton somewhere because I don't know if lupus can cause a person's skin to lighten like this because wow. I mean, I did a quick Bing search earlier and I didn't see anything about a side effect of lupus being that it turns you into a white woman. I know there have got to be some medical and healthcare professionals out there. So let me know if I'm completely off base on this one because I really don't want to um, think that Tony Braxton is doing the dreaded skin bleaching, but I honestly don't know what to think. Next up, Shakari Richardson. Fastest woman in the world, we love to see it, except we don't all love to see it apparently, as if on cue, here comes the ain't shit battalion. It seems fitting to be putting on my eye weave when I'm talking about this story. I didn't even know about this story until April, another one of my ride or dies told me about it. So shout out to her, except also no, because I hate this. Shikari's name and images were on everyone's lips and everyone's feed all week. Uh, once she qualified for the Olympics a few days ago, the Flojo comparisons abounded. It was a celebration almost all around, until that certain sect of black men had to chime in like always. You know the ones. The ones who assume that black women exist only for their gaze and pleasure, and therefore whether or not they want to fuck us determines our entire existence and value 
as walking, talking baby incubators. The delusion of it all. Shikari don't give a fuck if some rando on Twitter or some loser on Facebook don't like her wig, don't like her eyelashes, don't like her nail. The gag is these men assuming that we do care. Y'all are insignificant. For all intents and purposes, you don't exist. I'm thinking about you. Any woman with even a small public presence, I promise you there are these delusional, insignificant men writing entire dissertations on why they don't think she's hot, what she needs to change to be hot enough for them, and why they don't wanna fuck her. But trust and believe, these are one-way conversations and they're being left on unread. It seems to me there's a lot of men out here who have confused misogynoir with having an actual personality. Kevin Samuels has entered the chat. But we're good love, enjoy. I'm so encouraged to see more and more black women proudly neither wanting nor needing men who wrongfully assume we'd even waste our breath to tell them off. And shout out to all the black men who do come correct because we do see y'all. As long as we're talking about ancient men, by the way, Trick Daddy. Take the advice from literally the only song that I can name of yours and shut up. In case you hadn't heard, aging washed up rapper Trick Daddy, seemingly unprovoked, but clearly in desperate need of press and attention, decided to go after Beyonce. I just looked this up and he apparently said this on Clubhouse. Who is still using Clubhouse? Wow, the desperation drip. It really isn't even worth getting into this too deeply because, <sighs> but Trick Daddy said that Beyonce can't sing. I believe he actually said that everybody knows she can't sing. And he also said something to the effect of if Biggie hadn't died, Jay-Z would never have had the career that he has now. Now, I'm not gonna say too much on the latter point about Jay-Z because T, but full disclosure, I'm a pretty big Beyonce fan. Next time I see her live, it will be my fifth time, but I am also not a stan, I am not in the beehive, and I am not delusional to the point of saying that she is infallible. Whether you like her body of work or not, Beyonce is objectively an incredible singer. The development and maturity of her instrument, her voice from Destiny's Child days to now is remarkable. She already had natural talent, but she has also worked at her craft and it has paid off, literally. I'm gonna do some faux frecs today, be right back. Okay, so to borrow a sentiment from Bob the Drag Queen who paraphrased it from Adele, if you are hating on Beyonce, that says something about you, not Beyonce. Like the problem, is you. Ambivalence, fine. Not everything is for everybody. Not everyone is gonna be into everything, but to go out of your way to hate on Beyonce, the problem is you. This is very much giving me the same energy as those insignificants complaining about Shikari's wig. Left on unread. No one sent for you, try your best trick daddy. I had a few more things on my shit list to talk about today and I haven't even touched on Nick and his canon. Obvious psychological issues there if you want my unqualified opinion and I'm sure you don't. But I'm just about done getting ready and I think I'm actually gonna wrap this up with that Karen movie. My friend Audra, Audra at home, her channel will be linked below. She was the one to actually tell me about this. It was at either one of her or one of my movie nights, I can't remember. But there is a horror slash thriller TV movie on the way where the bad guy, the evil force is dead ass, a white woman named Karen. When Audra first told me about this, instantaneously I just got the thousand yard stare like, Hello darkness my old friend. Just here comes the wrongness, you know? And I couldn't quite put my finger on why this bothered me so much in the moment when I first heard this, but I think I know why now. Karen's, the epithet, the concept, while it is something that we throw around a lot as a punchline or in a humorous context, even though we do that, it isn't the outgrowth of anything funny at all. Karen's is a shorthand that refers to centuries of trauma and abuse of power. Karen refers to the use of whiteness and white tears to literally and not figuratively kill and cage black people. We think of Amy Cooper, Central Park Karen, as a Karen, but Carolyn, which sounds a lot like Karen, Carolyn Bryant Donham, the white woman whose lie got Emmett Till murdered, she was a Karen too, the prototype for so many Karens of today. So. Despite our use of humor to cope with the trauma, the idea that our coping mechanism to this trauma is now being monetized, well, that puts the joke back on us, doesn't it? And if I'm not mistaken, 
This Karen movie is also going to be on BET, y'all. To make a Karen essentially a boogeyman in a horror flick is repugnant and glib. It completely trivializes something that is serious, even if we do, again, to cope, talk about Karens and Karens gone wild in joking ways. I guess what I'm saying is, I hate it. Awkward slow-mos are a tradition around these parts. So while y'all look at those, I'm gonna put on the rest of my jewelry. But that is going to do it for this first ever roundup of not so hot topics of, of <laughs> lukewarm tea volume one. I am getting back on my grind with getting into a more regular posting cadence here on YouTube now that my last gig has wrapped. So if we like this, this could be something that I do monthly or maybe even a couple times a month. It's just a nice forum for me to get my hot takes on a bunch of shit at once without having to devote an entire video to talking about Trick Daddy. I rarely ask for this, but if y'all like this, please like this, meaning hit the thumbs up so I can get a sense of whether we're into this kind of format. And if so, we can do more lukewarm tea. That will do it for my first ever and possibly last ever roundup of not so hot topics. I definitely don't want this to become a gossip or drama channel or anything in that neighborhood. I, I still wanna make sure I'm always doing content that I believe in. So in the meantime, hit that thumbs up, let me know what y'all think. And uh, otherwise, stay safe. Stay dangerous and never trust anyone with the Morphe code. Bye bye. That's a, a nappy headed hose there, I'm gonna take that down. <laughs>